A lot of questions. They talked a lot about trade. I want to get into it with our panel right now. Let's bring in for more reaction. We've got Susan Lee, our own Fox Business. This is Susan Lee, former Federal Reserve Advisor, Danielle DiMartino Booth, and Fairfax Global Market CEO, Paul Dietrich. It's great to have all of you here. Susan, I want to start with you on something. The, you know, we, we were monitoring that testimony mm -hmm. that Jerome Powell gave uh, on Capitol Hill. He talked about trade, and there was a certain line that you know, we got from the statement today, a lot more talk about trade and tariffs, and that could be a hit for the economy. Yeah. They are talking about that. They are concerned about that. He said, quote, the bottom line is a more protectionist economy is less competitive. It is less productive. That's what he told lawmakers on Capitol Hill. They talked a lot about that in this mm -hmm. meeting, it sounds to yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. The minutes did point out that the uh, two vulnerabilities in terms of their autopilot plan to raise interest rates four times has to do with emerging economies. And emerging economies, we know China has been slowing down. There's been some, you know, effects from what happened in Turkey as well. So, yeah, tariffs would probably play into this and how, I guess, trade mm -hmm. might be impacted by these ongoing trade spats. Yeah, Paul, I want to bring you in and talk about the pressure we're seeing on the U.S. dollar right now. As we're seeing, that is one of the ill effects. Not a lot of market movement right now, but we are seeing some pressure on the dollar. What do you make of that? Well, uh, I think uh, it, if it's going down, as it seems to be, that's probably uh, a good sign that the market is a little bit relieved. I don't think anyone was surprised that we're going to see a rate hike in September. The big question that all investors want to know is what comes next, uh, because as the Federal Reserve is, is hiking short-term interest rates, the, the concern is the yield curve, and the yield curve is kind of an effective economic, leading economic indicator that has predicted every single recession uh, except for one in modern economic history. And uh, we're worried that that's going to invert if the Federal Reserve uh, keeps hiking these, these rates. And that's a real concern. The good news is it hasn't happened yet. Uh, and and once it happens, once the yield curve inverts and that indicator inverts, then it usually takes, if history is any guide, about 18 months before we see a recession and bear market. Yeah, that's interesting. And Danielle, I want to kind of get kind of you've got that inside track on the on the Fed or, or you did. But, you know, one of the things that we talked about if they were going to modify the statement is the fact that you know, what does neutral mean? Are they going to address the word as what does a neutral interest rate mean? And also kind of taking out, you know, like I said, they seem, they've been on autopilot with these interest rate hikes. We get so much, you know, heads up now. At some point, they're going to have to kind of back off that, I think. You know, they will. And I think that the market is going to now be hyper-focused on j Powell's uh, uh, Friday morning speech at, at Jackson Hole. Jackson Hole, thank you for bringing the, that. Uh, yeah. you know, the, the theme of this year's conference basically suggests that the neutral rate should be lower, and that's how the Kansas City Fed is painting it. The question is, will Powell get up to the podium and disagree mm -hmm. with that? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the doves on the Federal Market Committee would prefer that the neutral rate be closer to 2 percent, which means that we're mm. almost where we need to be. Right. And Jay Powell said publicly in Switzerland recently that he thought it should be 3 percent. So clearly there's dissension between the leader and his ranks. Which, which, again, will hyper-focus <laughs> markets on Friday morning. Well, I just want to add to that because, you know, in order to fund the budget cuts and the $1.5 trillion mm -hmm. in tax cuts, they've had to, that's essentially an interest rate hike in order to fund that if you don't have growth right. growing as fast as 4%. That's what we're expecting. Um, and so in some ways, wouldn't you say that four interest rate hikes this year not guaranteed at this rate? You know, I, I really think that, that Jay Powell would actually, if he had his druthers, right now non-labor costs are accelerating at the fastest pace in three years. This is a pragmatist who speaks to hundreds mm -hmm. of CEOs, and even if it's not in the Fed's inflation data that they track yet, he knows for a fact that inflation is truly he hurting did. companies. He did, but I want to bring back in Paul, because one of the things that they did talk about in the statement, or they did talk about in the minutes, excuse me, was that, you know, that at this point, they're not seeing businesses cut back. They're not right. seeing businesses start to shave off or, you know, not hire the 10 employees that they were planning to hire, not, you know, cutting back on their spending. Right now, you still have bullish 
uh, corporations across the country and small businesses, more importantly. You remember, em employment is just as important to the Fed as monetary policy is. I exactly. And we're actually seeing record levels of capital spending, partially due to the, the tax cuts. They're using earnings to do that. We're seeing more spending. The debate within the Federal Reserve Board of Governors is people like uh, Chairman Powell, who actually kind of view inflation as bad under any circumstances, mm -hmm. and then the more nuanced economists who understand that there's bad inflation, which is the inflation that comes from uh, printing too much money and having too many deficits. But there's also, we're seeing inflation right now caused by there are too many jobs and too few workers. Wages are going up. People are able to price, they have the freedom to price up, which actually causes inflation, but this is good inflation. Right. This is the kind of inflation that creates economic mm -hmm. uh, boom mm -hmm. in the country, That's and right. we shouldn't be raising right. rates right, right. for that. These well, two, these two are all said, that. they keep talking but, about but, it, Danielle, but, but I do want to ask you something specifically, mm -hmm. just because of your experience with the Fed. Sure. Is that, you know, and you mentioned Jackson Hole. I'm really glad you brought that up, because you, yeah. I think Jackson Hole potentially is more market moving this week oh, absolutely. than the minutes that we're going through yeah. right now. And a lot of people really wanted to know what Jerome Powell meant when he said gradual hikes were appropriate for now. <laughs> what does for now mean? What does that well, talk, you know, what does that say about their you know, timing? The, the problem is, is that we've all become so conditioned to parse every single word mm -hmm. that comes out of Fed policymakers' mouths, sure. whereas Jay Powell says what he means. So people on the Fed, leaders of the Fed used to say that they were data dependent, but their models could sway them otherwise, regardless of what the data was saying. For Jay Powell, if the data changes, he's going to change with the data. And that's mm -hmm. all he's saying. I mean, there was something very interesting in these minutes, and that's that residential housing was brought up right. for the first time. Like I think housing. if there's any reason that there's weakness in the dollar, which is how we started this segment off, right. it's because that was, that was a dovish insertion. And I would look to see if, if his remarks bring up any potential weakening in the economy come Friday well, morning. Well, Bruce, I want to bring up that with you because, you know, we have actually seen weakness in home sales, in particular new home sales. Yes. That's helped your retailers, your Home Depot or your Lowe's yeah. because people are like, all right, if I'm going to stay in my home, you know, good enough. Well prove it. But, make that it was, look but better. that's not an interest rate story. That has nothing to do with it. It's, it's a consumer it's, story. It's, it's because interest rates are still historically right. low. I mean, you go back to 1982, I think my parents were paying a 16% <laughs> interest rate on their mortgage. We, we don't have that. Yeah, now. no. I would say the consumer is strong as exhibited by Target earnings today and mm -hmm. existing home sales were down four straight months and that's not a dis demand mm -hmm. side issue that's yeah. a supply issue because mm -hmm. they don't have the right rightly priced homes the lower priced homes mm -hmm. are too they expensive they, right. they've got the home wrong kind of inventory but right. by the same token affordability really is at the lowest level of this entire cycle it didn't we take need to very see much wages. of a pop up in, in we need to see rates. wages get higher yes. Paul really 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 quick last word to you Paul recession 2019. That word has been bantered around. What do you make of that? It's not, it's not going to happen. I mean, if you this this economy is running on all cylinders. Uh, I do see th some things that worry me, like an inversion of the uh, the the yield, but it hasn't happened yet. It probably won't happen till the beginning of next year, and then we have 18 months of bull market after that. If history is any guide, can I just say though that the yield curve is a little distorted since we did have quantitative right. easing, one, two, three yeah. twist as well. I mean, and, it, so and it yeah, and it only took a year in 1999 okay. when stocks were this overvalued okay. for us to hit recession. So there's, there's, no, there's no playbook here. Guys, thank you so much for the analysis on these minutes. A lot to go through. Susan, Danielle, and Paul.